look at a tree like this in my backyard, there's a lot of energy there. I would guess that that's the equivalent of four or five barrels of oil sitting there in that tree. And if I was to take that and pyrolyze it and turn it into, just for the energy that it contains, that would be enough to heat my house through the winter time. So that's, that's important to recognize that there is lots of energy available in our environment and all this biomass. We have to begin to look at it more carefully and become more smart in how we assess it and make use of it. So this is all old technology. We were doing this at the turn of the last century and we discarded all this technology because oil became cheap and easy to get. And we gave up using biomass as a source of raw material and started using this black crude as the source of raw material to produce all these plastic and other synthetic products. This method started in the Amazon basin 6,000 years ago. And what you have to realize is that they took soils that are notoriously among the least fertile in the world and they converted them to some of the most productive soils in the world. The most fertile soils in South America are soils that have had this charred carbon added to them. Uh -huh. So that means that not only are we sequestering carbon, we're putting in place a foundation material that can restore fertility to currently unusable soils. We can increase the amount of arable land that can be used to produce food on, in the world right now if we practice this carefully and intelligently. Hopefully that could help us cut down on the pesticides, and the yep. herbicides, and yep. all these fossil fuels that yep. we're putting into the soil to yep. try to get more food. We could be utilizing this. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we start learning more about what mm -hmm. charcoal is. And most people have some experience with it because in their household, if they have a water filter, it's probably charcoal. Mm -hmm. If they have an aquarium, that filter for their aquarium that purifies the fish water is charcoal. So charcoal is a filtration agent. And when you put it in soil, it does the same thing. So it becomes a way to, first of all, capture nitrogen and prevent it from outgassing. So when you put charcoal in soil, it reduces nitrogen emissions from excessive use of nitrogen fertilizers. It also reduces wow. nitrate leaching into your watersheds. And instead, it holds the nitrogen in the soil like any good sponge or filtral media will do, mm -hmm. where the bacteria can get at it, break it down, and put it into non-toxic forms. So that's another benefit that charcoal has in soil, is it reduces nitrate leaching. It does the same thing for phosphorus. If you put it in soil, it acts as a trap to soak up and hold phosphorus and prevent phosphorus from leaching out of your soil. Mm -hmm. It also puts it in a form that's more available to be used by plants. So there's, if we start to study the charcoal, we discover that it does a whole lot of services in soil to make soil more efficient in its use of fertilizers. And because it accumulates these nutrients that plants need, plants grow easier, they grow better, they grow healthier, and they're not subject to diseases and insects. So of course you don't need to use pesticides, herbicides to protect your plants. They have their own natural immunity because of their full spectrum nutrition they're getting from this charcoal and rich soil. So it reduces, as you said, the need for many of the chemicals we currently rely on to produce our food. It allows us to move to a at least reduced chemical, and some of us believe a no chemical form of agriculture. Why biochar? Why do we want to Why do this? Biochar? Well, the, the number one reason it's being pushed right now is because of this carbon problem. Right. We've got all this carbon up in the atmosphere due to combustion, and we've got to figure out how to suck it out of the atmosphere and put it back in places where it's safe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take carbon that was fixed out of the atmosphere by plants in photosynthesis made into carbohydrates, wood, uh -huh. and other forms of cellulose, and we're going to heat it up to over 500 degrees and break it down until all that's left is the carbon. Okay. And we're going to drive off everything else. And if we take the carbon that we're producing in here and put it in soil, it will stay in soil for at least 100 years. And technically, if you put soil away, if you put carbon away in soil for 100 years, you have, quote, sequestered it. We are removing carbon from the atmosphere with the help of plants and turn it into Wait, a stable form. how are we form. Re removing carbon from the atmosphere with this? It's photosynthesis that takes carbon out of the atmosphere. In photosynthesis, green plants capture carbon dioxide, combine it with water, and make carbohydrates. Okay. And that's sugar. That's the sweetness of it. And so that's what happens in green plants. They're the ones that are fixing the carbon. What we're doing here is we're taking their carbon converted to cellulose 
and we're reducing it to char, which is just carbon. Okay. We're going to cook out everything else. We're going to cook out the oxygen, cook out the hydrogen, we'll cook out some of the nitrogen, and a lot of the other more volatile parts. We're going to boil them out of here with heat until all this left really is the carbon and the minerals. And so in this form, it's very stable. Uh -huh. You know, artists use charcoal because it's a medium that has permanence, and they can do charcoal drawings and they'll still be there in 10 years. And actually the carbon has been used in cave drawings that are 35,000 years old. And archaeologists and anthropologists do radiocarbon dating with charcoal to date ancient sites. Uh -huh. So we know that charcoal is a form of carbon that is stable for probably thousands of years, not just a few hundred years. Right. So if we convert carbon from the atmosphere into carbohydrates, convert them into char, put that char in the soil, it will stay there for generations of our time. So is this, would you say this is mostly for remediating soil, or are there other well, uses for biochar? When we put this stuff in soil, it doesn't just sit there. It actually creates a very unusual type of soil fertility that allows you to grow more biomass, bigger, stronger, healthier plants the next year. And you can put up to 9 to 10 percent charred carbon in soil, and it creates this explosion of vegetative growth. So that's one thing that's missing in our soil today. Agricultural practices, forestry practices have reduced the amount of carbon in our soil. As a matter of fact, a lot of that carbon that used to be in soil is now in our atmosphere. 20% of the carbon in the atmosphere comes from deforestation, from removing the forest from the land. And all that carbon that used to be in the soil, it's in the atmosphere. So it has lots of useful things to do. The last thing that charcoal does and the part that's most mysterious and poorly understood is that once the charcoal has nutrients and has water in it, then it becomes a housing structure. Right. It becomes a residential space in the soil and is inhabited by microorganisms, which are your soil food web. So this provides stable housing, condominiums if you like, for microorganisms mm -hmm. in your soil. And those microorganisms are what actually make the soil a living feeding network is what is the basis for the soil food web and you shift your soil from a chemical basis for fertility into a biological foundation where you're not relying on bags of chemicals you're relying on the microorganisms to feed your plants for you and they're much smarter at it than we are they've been at it for a couple billion years so they know what to do so we just create an environment through the charcoal which encourages the microorganisms to proliferate in the soil and create a living soil, not a dead, inert chemical soil. What is the ideal material mm. to burn? We're still trying to figure that out, but it's not not wood. It's not wood. Wood is too dense, and there's some indications that wood even has more toxic byproducts that are difficult for the soil to process. Really? So what I'm trying to encourage people to think about is processing more natural plant materials of a lighter weight substance. So in agriculture, for example, corn stover, corn stalk. At the end of, you harvest the corn itself, you have these stalks, if you just plow them into your soil, they'll be decayed and rotten and back in the atmosphere in three years. Right. If you char that corn stover, then that carbon will stay in your soil for a hundred or more years. And it's stable and maintains that carbon balance in your soil. So corn stalks are much more suitable in an agricultural mm -hmm. setting to do this process. Before another ten years goes by in the northeast, we're going to need to be growing a lot more food indoors under cover to extend our season and protect it from extreme weather. And so we think that uh, this type of biochar burner, heating water to heat soil inside a greenhouse, could be a way to produce fish and food from plants in the wintertime. So uh, that's the other hot application is a greenhouse heating system.